Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the end of the White Flyers. In today's episode, we have one very simple goal, which is to destroy or hopefully capture the Gorgon, which of course is the main base of the White Flyers. Now, I can't for the life of me remember what the Gorgon looks like, but I am almost certain in a past playthrough, over a year ago, I think, I did capture this thing. So what I'm going to do, most likely, is bring in the Bloodthirster so it can simply use its laser to knock out the AI, and then send in one of the test nukes, except for you know, no nukes. So we simply ride the test nuke all the way into the enemy base, it rams into the base, we jump off, everybody is incredibly happy. We just have to make sure not to use any of the other weapons on the Bloodthirster other than the laser. That way we can be nice and pinpoint and we can only kill the AI. Once that's done, we can go ahead and decide on our next enemy, which I think is just going to have to be the White Flyers. And by the White Flyers, I mean the Grey Talons. I was just looking at all of these things, and I got mixed up. A huge surprise, I know. Anyway, though, we will be going against the Grey Talons, although someone did point this out in the comment section of, that, of the last video. We will run into some issues fighting the Grey Talons. The reason is, the Grey Talons are friendly with our good friends, the Twin Guard. The Twin Guard are then the bestest friends ever with the Steel Striders, which means all three of these factions are connected. We can't start fighting one without the others getting annoyed with us over time. Although the Grey Talons have less of a friendship, so hopefully fighting them will be the best idea. If we go straight for the Steel Striders or the Twin Guard, we will almost instantly be fighting both of them at the same time. I'm also hoping since we're pretty friendly with these two factions and we're going to get even friendlier as we continue to kill the White Flyers because they hate them almost as much as we do, it's going to be at the end of the war with the Grey Talons that they become hostile to us and then they simply become the natural next enemy. Okay, that was a lot of talking. Let's get into the first fight, which is simply spawning in the enemy against our two buildings. Except for the fact the enemy are spawning in on a mountain, and if we're lucky, they're going to just kill themselves on the mountains. There we go, you did it. They must have hit with such a slow speed. Wait, is the other building not spawned in? Were they not in the same group? That's surprising. Which means we're going to start another fight afterwards? Unless that one simply died for some reason, maybe it's AI wasn't repaired yet. Either way, this is being a bit silly. And maybe I should jump off, because right now it's just being sustained by repairs, which of course is me. I don't like the fact that your repairs trigger that, I think that's a little bit odd, honestly. There we go. So, you two are there, and there's the one which took the most damage, kind of floundering. Oh no, there's the other building, so we get to do that again! Sure! This time it's the church. And this time I'm a bit further away, so hopefully it won't do the whole sustain thing. You're drowning in a puddle. I wish they didn't heal each other, because they could have easily killed themselves here. So, this will likely be a bit more effective as the nuke goes off. Well done, I will call you Timmy. Well done, Timmy, you made it. The martyr is dead, though, and the other two are a bit, um... They've had better days. I do love the Dragon's Claw, though. I mean, it, at the end of the day, this is what inspired me to make the nukes. Just here's the problem with melee craft in general. We could easily capture this, but I think they deserve this victory. Okay, it's been like three minutes now. Do I... Do I capture them? You know what? I'm capturing them. I think they deserve to be captured at this stage. Those two can't move, and this one's just stuck. Oh, wait, no, no! 
It is doing damage. Let me just turn off my healing. There we go. I won't be healing right now. Are you actually going to kill this? If you are, I will allow you to have the victory. I could so... Oh, look at that. You can see the engine. The engine's just right there. We could so easily knock that out. Whee! Is that your AI? I think, I think I can see it's AI. You stuck again? You're stuck again. Well, yeah. I think it's hurt itself. The AI is right there. You killed yourself on the church. Oh, the church has rams on the inside. You rammed yourself. <laughs> Go ram yourself, mate. <laughs> well, that's a glorious start to the day, I do have to say so. The church wins. <laughs> okay, so since these two can't heal each other and they're just floundering around unable to reach us, let's capture it, shall we? <laughs> Look at it spinning. It's just spinning in the place. Oh, that's just wonderful. Whoa, that really, that really, really messed me up then. I suddenly, whoa, that was weird. I suddenly connected to the vehicle with the gravity boots and the angle swapped. Let's try that again. In we go, in we go. Loud noises, I do apologize. Engine goes bye-bye. And you are now mine. Excellent. So, yeah. On the upside, this means we don't have to convert one of the drones. We can simply use the dragon's claw, which is now floating away. Bye. I'm just going to capture your brother. You just don't go anywhere. I didn't even hit you yet. Did I? I threw a grenade from over there. That could not be enough to kill you. Either way, we've got one of the dragon's claws. That's all we need. <laughs> Let's just jump on, shall we? Well, that didn't go according to plan. Why are physics against me today? Okay. Let's pull you out for a second, then spawn you back in. Oh god, the physics of these things. There we go. Okay, we've got it. We've got it in build mode. That's all I wanted to do. I could have done that from the map screen, by the way. But still, okay, let's give you just one or two repair bots so that we can actually repair you out of play. Because clearly, you do not like things standing on you. You're not into that, are you, buddy? There we go. And heal up. Good. Good. I had completely forgot about this, but apparently I have a blood fang just kind of chilling here in the mountains. This is the last fully functioning blood fang we currently have, with all of the others either being destroyed or being so badly damaged they're no longer functional, and I simply don't want to spend the money to replace them and repair them. I think we should have one last battle using the Blood Fang. So the Blood Fang plus two Corn Flakes are now heading towards one of the last White Flyer villages. Happy hunting, my lovely wooden minions. This could be a screensaver. Okay, this is taking absolutely forever. Uh, da, 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 personal buffs, goodbye brawler. I think that gave me a slight bonus. Yay! Now we get to find it by actually exploring. Whoa, this is weird. There's some fuel, there's an engine. I guess that's for the rams in the center, the spinning rams themselves. Which I've had very little use for, which is kind of sad. Uh, are you in here? Yes, you are. Okay, so you're in there. Boop. This may take a while, even with maximum level Stormtrooper. 
Whoa, that was creepy. Okay, so there we go. We have the pyramid. The rest can simply go away. Oh, I miss my missile spam from the corn flags. They were such good early game vehicles. Probably some of my favourite. Could capture that. Don't really care enough. They're only worth a couple of thousand resources in total, so... Just keep destroying them. Why are those frags so spread? That's weird. They're clearly not going in the... straight line they're meant to. And thus, a lot of damage is being wasted. Well, actually, very soon, fragments are going to be nerfed in that way. Essentially, the more narrow the cone, the less damage they do. I believe it's either less damage per fragment or less fragments, something like that. With the wider the cone, the more damage, but of course, the wider the cone, the less effective it is at just going straight through a target, as you can see here. Okay, the battle is over, and I would like to do one very simple thing. Also, if we, like, cut a perfect line here... How did that happen? That is really weird. Okay, well, let's just jump to the top, slowly. There we are. I want to do one very, very simple thing. Okay, let's just put some wood down here, like so. And for now, we're going to be quite boring, because I don't want to simply sit here all this time, allowing the enemies to reinforce. I really don't want one last attack to spawn in from the white flyers. And then, let's see if I can find it. I think it's like 18. No, it was 21. Either way. If we're going to have an altar, it may as well be a blood altar. As my Uncle John used to say. There we are, and then the other one, a nice dark red. Just to make sure people know who this actually belongs to. And I may come back to this and do a little bit more editing later. Perhaps like a few mainframes hanging here, some fire and stuff. Actually, we could quickly add a mainframe, I can't help myself. Oh no, we can't add paddles and such, can we? Because this is a structure. Oh, darn it. What can I add then? I guess glass would sort of work if we use the window blocks. That could kind of look like a chain. Huh. That might actually look better than the paddles. I actually think it does. It definitely does. Well, you learn something every day, I suppose. There you go. The old mainframe, the old leader of this village. That's what that is. As a little bit of a scouting effort, we are going to be sending four nukes against the Gorgon. I want to see what the Gorgon looks like these days before the true battle. There we are. I'll jump onto this one because who needs to be safe these days? And let's have a quick look-see. Okay, all on. Oh, that has definitely changed. Oh my god, that looks glorious. I need this. Oh my god, I totally need this. Look, there's even somewhere for me to preach the word of the blood god. <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. So many missiles, though. The chance of this not killing me is very low. So there's two AI. The White Flyer's Head Temple and the Sub AI. Okay, then, well... Uh, just continue, I suppose. Oh, all the missiles are going for one target, which is good for me. Please don't actually kill the target, though. Oh, the lag as it decides how this is going to play out. Okay, you can unfreeze now. Anytime. There we go. Okay, so it took out one of four. As radiation settles upon the spires. Oh, one of the turrets were taken out. This is actually somewhat of a problem. I didn't think it would be so heavily defended. Um, you're firing at a single turbocharger there. Well done. I didn't think it would be so heavily defended, so I was hoping the Bloodthirster could just kind of sit there and laser it, but... 
This is going to be somewhat more difficult. I may have to rethink my plan. Maybe send a few more nukes to try and take out the other turrets. Actually, where am I and how did I survive? Did I fall off? Did I jump off? I can't remember. Either way, I have the memory of a potato. Okay, so here's my thought process. The Bloodthirster has anti-missile systems, it also has quite powerful shields. Therefore, it should, in theory, be able to survive quite an onslaught from advanced cannons and missiles. In theory. It really does, though, depend on what type of shells those turrets were using. If they're regular kinetic, we're fine. If they're fragment, we're absolutely destroyed. If they're high explosive or heat shells, less destroyed but still pr in a pretty bad place. Okay, so a few tweaks. Uh, the lasers are now a little bit more accurate, being only in accuracy 0.12 and 0.11. Whereas before they were 0.16 in accuracy, so they should be better at long range. I've also made it so only the laser AI is currently on, and I've redirected a little bit of power to the shields. So the laser is going to be more accurate, but a little bit weaker during combat. So I'm hoping we can simply stay at such a long range away that our counter-missiles can kill their missiles, and our laser can simply get the job done. We do, however, need to spawn in the Dragon's Claw, so we actually have some way to get to the target. The Dragon's Claw doesn't need to survive, it can simply die almost as soon as the battle starts, but any amount of distance it gives us is a huge benefit. Which does mean, actually, we need to give this a chair so we don't fall off like before. One final change is I'm going to turn all of the missiles on the Dragon's Claw into EMP missiles. Now, they won't be all that powerful, only having two warheads, but hopefully, just hopefully, this might be enough to take out a single weapon. It might be just enough to knock out one of the AI, since I don't know where they are. There's just a really small chance it will really help us, and because of that, I think it's worth it to go ahead and swap them over. I totally didn't lose the EMP warhead just then. There we go. Wonderful. Well, here we go, blockading the Dragon's Claw so that we can be as close as possible. In fact, right there, that's really good. And if we make it go over here as well, it means that the enemy's guns need to face backwards in order to fight against them. And then the Bloodthirster, you need to be as far away as possible. I'm really hoping this works. Begin. I want this fortress. Taking control. Okay, the missiles have gone against the Bloodthirster. Once again, a lot of lag. It seems like there's just so much to this fortress that as soon as something gets close, it just lags out a bit. There's one of the Dragon's Claw EMP missiles doing practically nothing, but that's fine. Am I still inside of the Dragon's Claw? Ahem. How about, how about if I jump over to this? Thank you very much. Ah, the enemy does have smoke. We are doing some damage through it, but not quite enough. Until that smoke clears, the Bloodthirster just isn't doing the damage needed. Seriously, the Dragon's Claw has a second... Okay, that's just annoying. Okay, so what we need to do is go over to build mode halfway through the fight. Now I'm on the outside. Now I can jump off. Okay. Hello, enemy. You're stuck on the enemy, aren't you? Yes, you are. Okay, lasers everywhere, but we can follow where those lasers are going since it does have target prioritization and aim point selection, most importantly. So it is trying to fire at something. What are you aiming at? I see a lot of smoke over here. Well, there's all the smoke dispen- My lord, it has a lot of smoke dispensers. Is that the AI? Uh, it's a control block. And the missile system, but no, it's not the main AI. It must be after the control block for some reason. So where is the AI? Also, I can't zoom out because we're paused. There we go. That's better. So where is the AI? The AI is... Is... It's hard to see. Okay, the two spires. Which two spires? There's more than two spires there, Lathrix. 
Is it this one? I'd assume so, it's one of the bigger. Although that's a lot of stuff which is very easy to detonate, so I doubt it. Oh, the laser is firing at it! It's in there! It's in the two Stumpier Towers! This one and this one. In fact, the Dragon's Claw came remarkably close to tearing one out straight away. Yep, yeah, there it is. Oh, they're going to be so difficult for me to get at. I don't know what to do. Do I help? Do I try and fire and put my own health at risk? Which could be really bad if the Dragon's Claw dies. Or do I just hope that the laser system does its work and then I'm on board for that to work out. I think I'm going to have to try and help. That's just what I'm going to have to do. So, they're really heavily armoured. I think the best way to do this... Maybe go through here, yeah. Go to the bottom floor and then try to dig my way up. That way I'm not in the way of the laser either. Hello! Okay, a fair while later. Sorry for the loud noises. Come on, go through, thank you. Hello! One down. One down, okay, one to go. Whoa! Explosions everywhere. Something just went up horribly. Guys, you need to stop, you need to stop, there's been too much damage done. Ah, oh, crap, it's still firing at me though. How is the Bloodthirster actually doing? How is it holding up? It should be doing okay. In all respects, it does counter the fortress. It's taking some damage on the side. As you can see, it does counter the shells. The shells, they're bouncing away. So the shields are doing a great job keeping the turrets at bay. Only one major turret is left anyway. Where is the Dragon's Claw? You're still alive, but doing almost no damage. Seriously. I love you, Dragon's Claw. You are an amazing design, but... Okay, look, there's an opening. There's actually an opening to the other fortress. Okay, let's go. Oh, uh, this is gonna hurt me, that's the problem. No, I, I've still got to break through here, otherwise I'll end up hurting myself. Hurrah for max level Stormtrooper, I suppose. It's only just occurred to me that most of this outside is actually just light alloy. I was what I was wondering why it was so easy to break through this wall. Thank you. Okay, loud noise, incoming minigun. Yes! Oh yes! We did it! The corruption, delusions, and psychosis of the fanatical White Flyers has been put to an end. Worship of the Flayed God can only be found in darkened corners, hiding from the blood. Never again will this evil cult of lunatics bring fear and suffering to the people of High Lorham. To many here, you are a liberator, bringing freedom of religious diversity to the masses, blood for the blood god. To others, you are a tyrant that destroyed a culture. Think of us what you will, but I am of the firm belief, and let's all say it together, that we are the good guys. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the Blood Fortress! <laughs> oh, that is glorious in every sense of the word. Dragon's Claw, you traitorous cad, you are wonderful. You are absolutely wonderful. Whoever designed you, I love you. Dragon's Claw, go away. <laughs> I still love you though, but go away for a second, eh? Bit of um, physics. Bit of physics breaking here, but still. Oh no, look, there are some light. Wait, how did I destroy this without destroying the light locks? Oh, I see how they've done that. The light blocks are inside the turret cap, and therefore the light blocks are protected. That's actually not a bad idea. Bloodthirster, you've made me proud today. Oh, we need to get the this repaired, but how much is it worth? Oh. Oh. Thankfully, we've only hurt, like, under a third of it, but that's still going to cost us a fair bit of money. Okay, well, I'll put down some repair bots so that we can repair this whilst it's out of... There we go. Whilst it's out of play. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish off the last resource zone. I'm going to use the nukes because I do want to use them less often when we go against our next faction. They are wonderful. 
And people seem to utterly love them, and thank you so much. It's so nice when a design or an idea gets so much approval. But it's the low risk of them, which is, which is my major problem. For such a cheap cost, for instance, at the start of this battle, we took out one of the major... In fact, two of the major guns and made a huge hole in the side with only four nukes. That's just over 8,000 resources, and we did maybe 20 plus thousand damage. Normally, it can be even higher than that if we get even slightly lucky. With the, with the Bloodthirster, there was a real possibility of a serious risk there. Heal up. Because if it did take damage, if those shells were frag, we could have easily lost the Bloodthirster since it could only use its laser. I feel really bad, but I've had to do it. The Sinner's Pit, or whatever it was called, the lovely pyramid we found earlier, I found out it was worth around about 100,000 resources. Moving out. I can't Moving out. leave that. That is such a huge bonus to us. Especially since now, that means we can repair the Gorgon almost straight away. So, thank you to the other thing we captured. We just sacrificed you for your old leader. The Blood Altar is moving away from one of the old resource zones, which simply was no longer needed, and is slowly moving its way over here, so in the meantime, let's do some nuking. There we go, thankfully not spawning in its defending group there, since we got there so quickly. It is there, but it's not part of the battle. It will probably spawn in during the battle, but that won't really make too much of a difference. Let's put you at the back, since afterwards we do have another wave of nukes, and then we have the Bloodthirster, all very, very close. Ahem. Thank you. No, not land mode. I just want to jump there. Thank you. I love that little second at the start of the battle before AIs turn on, where these things sort of just float in place. Not quite sure what they're doing. Hello, resource harvester! Have you heard the good news? Your people are done for. Wait, did both of your nukes detonate separately? That was a first. Oh, one explosion- explosion? Explosion right in the middle of the enemy. Oh, that was glorious. And it is actually AI dead. Ah, but the one I'm in also got killed. That was a shame. There we go, the resource zone is finished with. Uh, you need to move. I only lost 3% health. What happened to you? Maybe its engine got knocked out? The rest of the nukes can deal with this enemy, which is a dissector and a zealot. Come face your end, friend. Wait, how fast are you? 15, how fast am I? 101. I think we can probably catch up. I just had a quick look at the footage from that last fight. It wasn't that the engine got knocked out. The local weapon controller got turned off. That's just weird. Okay, I would like you to be absolutely everywhere, so no matter which way the enemy moves, you will be there ready to hit them in the face. Which is rather nice, I've got to say. Okay, you're only 16, so you should be there, since you can't go high enough, since clearly you're not one of the updated versions. There we go, that should be okay. Let's go on the back one again, and hopefully this will go well. Okay, so here's the thing. I know for a fact that this lovely bugger here uses fragment shells, which will one-shot any of our nukes. The Zealot, on the other hand, will actually want to engage us in melee range. So, if I can do that for a second and unpause. Can people please go after the Dissector? That was loud. There we go! Hello there, Dissector! Welcome to the air! <laughs> Okay, well, down goes you. That was pretty darn effective, got to be said. Engaging now. Any who are left, please attack the zealot. Zealot, what are you doing? The zealot just wants to be a spacecraft. Please don't hit each other. Oh, you are so close to ramming each other and setting off each other's nukes. Hello! Oh, well, there goes your butt a little bit. Lifting, lifting. Let's get on the one closest, shall we? Um. 
Okay, we are going after the enemy. We're just slow because we're in the water. Stop being a sub. Don't make me manually control you and make you go up for a while. Okay, manual control it is. Up we go. And now back down. How did I survive? Oh, wouldn't that have been amazing if I actually landed on the zealot after that? Do we have any nukes still alive? No, but the enemy... Oh, the enemy almost died there. It was classed as sinking. Moving out. Oh, well. No final kill there for the nukes. Listening. Moving out. Where are you going? Okay, Bloodthirster, intercept and kill it, please. And once again, we will simply use the laser to finish off the Zealot. Aww, it wants a belly rub. Turning off. Now roll over. Good boy. Now play dead. Play dead. Aww, the zealot's such a cute little puppy. Okay, so here's my current plan. We're going to go ahead and attack this strength 86 white flyer area, after which we will hopefully be in the lands of the Grey Talons. But this time around, rather than attacking from the bottom, which was the original plan, we are going to attack from the side, which hopefully isn't as ridiculously reinforced, but also will be closer to their base, so it can be a faster war. The Grey Talons are the one faction I am truly, truly afraid of. I am worried about the Scarlet Dawn as well, but the only reason I'm not terrified of them is because they're so late game. We end up fighting them once we have a lot of resource zones under our command, so even if we lose two out of three battles, we can win the War of Attrition. So the end victory, I just can't see us losing, even if we play incredibly poorly against them, which is possible because some of the Scarlet Dawn designs, especially in the coming update apparently, are really scary. But the Great Talons are a risk, are a factor so close to us now and so soon, I am actually really nervous about hitting the go to war button. As always, I am on the nuke furthest at the back, and already the nukes are getting close and a little bit of friendly fire there with the Dragon's Claw. Ooh, are the nukes fast enough for this? Oh dear. Well, that's certainly a sight, isn't it? The Dragon's Claw following the nukes, which are gently ramming the main flyer. There we go, two, no two nukes going off, two nokes. One completely destroying its movement, the other hitting its belly, a third going off in the stomach, and now we are in space. And the enemy is too damaged, so the targets are now being swapped. Ooh. Although by the looks of things, it sort of fell on the nukes. Oh no, it's no longer too damaged. The healing has healed it back up. Hey guys, please go after not you. This guy over here. This one. Engaging now. Thank you. Darn drone healers. Getting Robocraft flashbacks. Oh, what a perfect kill by the enemy. Hardly even hurt them. Only one nuke remains, and well, it's sort of. Yeah, there's not much to it, except for the nuke itself. That did very little damage to the Dragon's Claw. Well, that wasn't the best outro for the nuke. Let's try that again. Okay, one more try with the nukes. They've all just been repaired, and it's time to fight again. Thankfully, they are incredibly quick to repair, so this group can be back up and fighting in moments. And considering the group moves at over 100 meters per second, it could also be back in the battle incredibly quickly. Okay, one go a bit further back, which of course I will jump onto. Uh, I would like to scatter them a little bit more, though. 
so they don't blow each other up, because sadly the damage of nukes doesn't stack. It's why adding loads of nukes to the same spot, or even the same craft, doesn't always really yield much benefit. I currently have five, I believe, on these, no, four on these, which just helps with the physical impact to guarantee a detonation. Poor balloons. Okay, two damaged and now being ignored. Hurrah for ignore salvage and bam. Oh, I forgot about the spike. Why won't you leave me alone? Oh, that went really high. Look, there's a few blocks over here, a few blocks over there. There's the nuke's butt. There's the dead nuke. Um, are we ignoring everyone now? You see, that was better. That was much better. Well, this is the problem, I suppose, with playing on times two with reinforcement speed. That is going to be horrendous. Do I throw the nukes at them just to find out what they are? I mean, that would be a great way to start a war. Welcome to the war. Here are your complimentary nukes. I don't know what to do about this, honestly. Moving out, moving out. The more I see, the more upset I am. 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, and I'm going to assume 149. I don't even know how to tackle this. I don't know enough about the Grey Talons. That's another reason why I'm so scared of them more than the other factions. They are the faction I know the least about. I know about two craft. I think one is called... No, I think I've got the name wrong. I will probably get this name wrong, but the Hunchback or something similar to that... No, the Kobold. Is it the Kobold? I don't know. There's one which has two ridiculous 500mm advanced cannons, and the idea is it just unleashes hundreds of shots in a few seconds and a short burst, which destroys most other things. I know that exists. I think the Hunchback is another craft, but then I also know of the Extinction, or something similar to that, which has a particle cannon and all sorts of nonsense, just from hearing about it over the last few months before starting this campaign. I'm very careful to try and avoid spoilers, but that's all I know. And there's going to be at least 20 plus designs, and a lot of them will be godly. And a lot of people do hold the Grey Talons in very high regard, so... Do I just run in there? Shall I just run in there with a Bloodthirster? We are getting a lot of resources right now per second. This is in times one speed, and if you look at the bottom left... Yeah, we're not exactly short on resources, but also, it would just be a good experience to see what it is. I don't think I will survive a single Bloodthirster versus a Strength 150. It's not going to happen, but since we're already there, we could just find out some stuff about them. And of course, we could bring our Nuke Swarm behind the Bloodthirster once the Bloodthirster dies. Where is our Judgment? Actually, that's a good point. We could send the Judgment with it. That should be the other large vehicle currently fully repaired. The Perforator is also very close to being healed, so actually what we could do is wait a little bit, heal the Perforator, and then bring that and the Bloodthirster together. The problem is the Perforator is volume 30,000, which makes battles less fun. So maybe the Judgment. Okay, yeah, since we already have the Judgment, this is a scouting attack. Now, what we could do is go through the, the Lightning Hoods and try to go north from here. Since we do have this area still heavily fortified with the enemy, who are now leaderless, it wouldn't be too boring, but it would be quite a slog. It would take a long time, and the issue with that is that just more tiles are going to become Strength 150. We can't spend that much time going through here. It's definitely the better option, and it would even put us in better stead, if we go here, for our alliances. The reason is, apparently, no one likes the Lightning Hoods, except for the White Flyers. If we fought them, if we go down here, we would get a benefit with the Twin Guard and the Steel Striders. Yeah. That is 
definitely something we should consider, actually. If we did this, it would put us on better standing. I'm looking at this more and more and just trying to think to myself, is this the right option? The problem is I don't want a hundred more fights before we finally get to the Grey Talons. It would take forever. But that is definitely the smart thing to do. What happens if I insult the Lightning Hoods? Aha! Oh, it did actually make us a little bit more friendly with them. Go us! The problem is, of course, you can no longer bribe your allies like you used to be able to back when there wasn't just a single material, a single resource. I don't like how... I think it's worth it. I think it is worth it. But only just. Only just. So, come on, let's just go straight for the enemy. I'm bored, I want to fight them. Great Allens! I officially declare war on you. That didn't hurt me as much as I thought it would. Okay, that's nice. The upside as well is although the Onyx Watch did lose a little bit of rep with me, they are suspicious with the Great Talons, and at very least, we won't become enemies with them. We are no longer allied to the end, we are simply allied with the Onyx Watch. They are finally becoming suspicious of our actions. Receiving. To be fair, it did take them long enough. Uh, judgment, you should stay where you are. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I am not looking forward to this at all. <laughs> oh. Okay, into the first battle versus the Grey Talons. So, we are against the Thunderclap, the Thunderclap, the not even going to try, and the Flail. We are bringing pretty much everything we can. Okay, so we're going to bring in the nukes first. The nukes and the judgment together, hopefully. Yep, we can bring all of that in together. So let's just throw the nukes as close as possible, but also a bit scattered away from the judgment, of course. That would be the worst thing ever. Now, thankfully, since all of the Grey Talons, I think with no exceptions, but I may be wrong there, are all flyers, it means that there's no chance we're going to randomly sink the nukes. The nukes won't randomly go into the water, so they should actually be more effective than ever. Hurrah! Although, once again, I will be stopping using them on their own. I feel like just sending a nuke swarm is a little bit cheesy. A lot of people do seem to disagree with this, but I just don't like it all that much. Uh, Bloodthirst, actually, you can come from the side. And then the two hovers just a little bit further back. You have quite a long range on your main guns. The Thunderclaps are f 413,000 material each. That makes my Bloodthirster seem so cheap. The other two, thankfully, are significantly cheaper, so the two big ones are our big threat, I imagine. Hopefully the nukes can do wonders on the first one. Uh, jump onto you, and let's just begin. Let's, let's just see how this goes. If we lose, we lose, but we do lose to a superior amount of materials. I just want to destroy this. There we go. Okay, so... Where's the big guy? Did the big guy not spawn in straight away? Oh no, the nukes are going to be wasted on these little ones. Which are drones. They're drones with cram cannons. What? <laughs> I didn't expect that. Well, the nukes did their job and pretty much countered the first wave at least. I was going to turn off the judgment, but then lag happened, so I assume the big guy has just spawned in. Oh, my word, it looks like the Moray from the Deepwater Guard. But oh my god, it's a flying Onyx watch. I love the colour scheme on this thing. Oh, Jesus. So, three, three, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and of course, all the way up to twenty-two. There's 22 cram cannons on this in total, and a boatload of tiny little advanced cannons. Honestly, I am oh, i don't know, maybe I'm misjudging this, but I don't feel too threatened by this because of cram cannons. They tend to be difficult to aim versus flyers, and considering most of my forces, I'm aiming to be flyers in the future and the present. It's not too bad, but... I also imagine any hits from these things will spell the end. So we've got a short amount of time 
before these cram cannons can actually fire. So, anyone who's left, if there are any nukes currently healthy enough to move, please focus. Oh my god, missiles. Never mind, I completely misju mis misjudged it. It made me stammer, it's so scary. Okay, a few shells are getting through, but not enough. Why aren't you broadsiding? Your guns aren't able to fire, buddy. Okay, manual control. I am forcing you to broadside towards the right. One of our nukes just took a small missile and didn't die, which is nice. Incoming! Bad things. Thank you, shields! They don't have inertial fuses! Okay. Double shielding, really helping out here. A fair bit of armor damage, but not too much. We've lost our front gun. Come on, judgment. You're a godly class vehicle too, you know. And stolen. You work for the Blood God, the Blood God and the Legion. By the way, thank you to the commenters who kind of made the, the name Blood God for my forces so popular. I really like that. It's a bit edgy, but I do love it. Thankfully, because of how it's moving, most of its guns can't fire, and we've stripped the ones that can. It's just those darn missiles. They're weak, but they're swarms. Good at countering small craft, I imagine. Not so much against something like the Judgment, which is just pure armor spam. Come on, Judgment, you can do this. Stop being hit. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, please, shield. Shield, shield. Nope. Okay, a few got through. Thankfully not hitting the main gun, but it did destroy our ammo storage. So we now only have the shells which are left in the barrel. Why aren't you firing? You have shots left. Why aren't you firing? Wow, this fight's gone on for so long, it's now night time. Okay, seriously? I don't even know what that AI does. Clearly, we, we were in fleet move. That doesn't matter anyway, since I wanted to broadside earlier than it would have. So, didn't actually hit, change anything, but should have done something. Why aren't you firing? I don't get it. Why aren't you firing? Why aren't you firing? Why are you not firing? Can I manually control this sudden gun? Rails charging. It has no power. Oh, God. It's because the rails are broke. Uh, rail gun settings. Oh, crudding hell. Yes. You can fire even if the rails are offline. Sure, that's fine. We lost our engines and our fuel storage. That's what happened. Okay. Bit of troubleshooting there. I don't use rails enough to instantly know what the answer was there. Oh, God, those shields are doing such a good job against us. A few shots are getting through, but not enough. I'm hoping it doesn't have too much laser defense. If it doesn't, then the bloodletter, I, I, the bloodthirster, I really believe is going to do well against these. What a gorgeous craft, though. It really puts me to shame. I may just surrender the judgment soon. As soon as this gun turns off, I surrender it. It's not worth the cost of keeping it in the battle. Uh, you can't. F okay, you are still firing. You still have some shells left. Hats off to, to, to the Judgment, though, for being able to survive such a beating. Those missiles really are not too powerful, though. Oh, the cram cannons are, though, and I am drowning. Okay, let's get off here. Excuse me. Thank you. Gotta love being blind. I really should do tournaments at some stage, either from user, ooh, either from user submitted designs or just from the designs in the campaign. Because, because I do love watching things like this. Neither of these are my design. I take no credit, but I love watching them. Okay, yeah, the judgment, there's no point keeping this in now, so let's just surrender you. Um, if I could, that would be wonderful. There we go, surrender, yes. So it's there unless we lose. Okay, Bloodthirster, welcome to the party, my friend. It doesn't have laser defense. It does not have laser defense. Yes. Oh, I still need to be more accurate, though. That's the problem. Let me just jump back onto the Bloodthirster quickly. 
Okay, turning the right way now, making sure I'm not holding anything. That's good. Okay, was that two damage? Yes, it is. Why are you not ignoring salvage? Stop firing. You don't have unlimited ammo. It's like your major weakness. You do run out of ammo during fights. God, that thing could take a beating. Okay, there we go. Thankfully, all of our shells were counter shields. The laser could get through the shield. We won based on that. These are 400,000 resources. I bet almost half of that resource is just those cram cannons. They're so expensive, cram cannons are. Let's just pause this so the, the disintegration speeds up. Thank you. Massive bouts of lag. Oh no, it's behind us. Oh, no, 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 no. Thankfully, one of our hovers did get to spawn in, though. So the hover is helping, but it's behind us. Oh, this is... This may actually make us lose. Just this this positioning is awful. I can't think... We're kind of broadsiding, but that's not good. The Bloodthirster does not broadside. It points at the enemy, which it will try to do, of course, but it's going to take a while to do so. Yeah, it is turning for the broadside. Uh, the hover is helping... Uh, it's done a little bit of damage there. A few shots got through. One of the under cannons is thankfully firing from the Bloodthirster. Oh, Lord. Missiles. The anti-missiles were fired far too recently. They're just not helping at all. We're going to take that full brunt. Some of the 500mm shells have hit, though, and they've done a lot of damage. The laser is now finally pointing at the enemy. What an awful start to that fight. Okay, the missiles from the hover are coming in. The hover's actually doing a lot of work. Thank you, you cheap, cheap bugger. The thing is as well, I've never heard of this. People have never went, aha, it's the thunderclap, which you have to be worried about, which makes me even more worried because these things are phenomenally cool. Can you tell I'm really happy right now? I love these types of fights where it's just the unknown. So happy about that. I'm also so happy that laser is such a main thing now for the Bloodthirster. Oh, it does seem to have some smoke or something. The laser did get weakened then for a second, but... Yeah, the laser is just chewing on this enemy so effectively. Those missiles are just not that good. Oh, saying that, we have lost one of our guns. Oh, actually a lot of internal damage. Oh, wow, a lot of internal damage. Aha! You can't hit the hover tank! It's too fast! <laughs> I think we win. I think we win our first fight. We did lose the judgement. Ow. And we did lose a lot of health on the Bloodthirster, though. It was definitely a great cost to us. In fact, we're going to be broke for materials after this fight. So in terms of attrition, we can't keep doing that frequently. I think I may have undervalued um, kinetic shells, though, even with the shields. Well done to the hover. I mean, seriously, you did so much damage at the start there. You took out one of the guns. For your low cost, that was wonderful. Apparently, though, you haven't been set to ignore salvage yet, so... There is that. Are we done? Did we actually lose one of the... Hovers. No, I just didn't see the other one. Okay, so... Yeah, that was that. We do need to keep an eye on this, because eventually we will end up going to war with these two. Sadly. Since they are friendly with both the Steel Striders and the Twin Guard. Okay, so for now... I am going to call this episode. Uh, it's been a bloody long recording session, but I have had a lot of fun, and I really hope you've enjoyed it too. But before we go, let's jump on over to the Gorgon. Let's have a look now. It's been fully repaired, and it is the Blood Temple. Ahem, I said spawn in. Go on. Do the thing I wanted you to do. That lags out so much when it spawns in. And, of course, it's raining. The Tears of the Flied God. There we go. So, if you have enjoyed the video, then, of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and, most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. 
One more faction have gone down, and yet there are so, so many more to go. We got almost no material from that. I have no idea where to go next time, so thank you for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>